Good morning, children, and welcome to our Sunday School lesson for this morning. I'm glad to be able to welcome you, although I wish we could be together in person. But this is the next best thing. I have a question for you. Have you ever experienced a storm? This, just this last week, we actually had a storm here in our town. And uh, a few nights ago, my husband and I woke up in the middle of the night to lightning flashing in our room and the sound of hail and rain and thunder. And I remember wondering if my kids were sleeping through it. And so the next morning I asked our children, did you hear the storm last night? And they all shook their heads and said, no, nope, they slept through it all. And I think that's wonderful that they were able to sleep through the storm, even though the storm woke us up. And today we're going to hear about a storm as well in our story. But before we do that, we want to bow our heads and we want to ask God to bless us together this morning. Let's do that now. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that we can come to you every day of our lives, that no matter what kind of situations we're going through, even if it's a storm, that you've promised to be there with us and that you've promised never to leave us, that you're always just a prayer away. Thank you that you care about our problems, Thank you that you care about all the little things that go on in our lives and that you love us so much. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, that you would be very near to them and that you would help them, that you would heal them, and that we could glorify you together for the things you've done. Lord, we pray for those who are sad, who've maybe lost someone that they've loved. Lord, that you would comfort their hearts and be near to them. And please bless us together this morning as we look at your word and as we learn from from you and what you did while you walked on this earth. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Have you ever been busy? Do you think Jesus was someone who was busy? What did Jesus do all day anyways when he worked, worked here on earth and when he had his years of ministry? Well, the Bible tells us that he had lots of things to do. We read that he would get up early in the morning and pray to God, his heavenly Father, we read that he would travel from one village to another, and they didn't have airplanes back then. They had to walk much of the time to get from one town to the next. We know that wherever Jesus went, people brought him their sick, and he would heal people all day long. Another thing that we read about in the Bible is that Jesus did a lot of teaching, so that's a lot of talking. Big groups of people would gather in front of him, and he would tell them all about the, the Old Testament, about the laws, and what that looked like in his New Testament time, in the time that he lived in, what God's law for us was, about loving him above all, and about loving our neighbor as, as ourselves. And so these are the kinds of things that filled Jesus' day. And as you can imagine, Jesus was probably pretty tired at the end of every day because he was such a busy man. And one evening, at the end of another long day, I'm sure, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat, and they crossed the Sea of Galilee. And you can see here on the picture, right here, the front of the boat is Jesus. And what is he doing? He's sleeping. He's sleeping on a pillow. And why might he be sleeping? Well, what did we just say? Jesus had been busy. And just like you're tired at the end of a long, busy day, Jesus was tired too. We have to remember that even though Jesus was completely God, he was also completely man, which meant he got tired just like all of us get tired. And so Jesus took an opportunity here to rest. There were no crowds who were coming to him to listen. There were no crowds coming to him to be healed. He was simply with his closest friends and they were crossing over this sea and he had time now to rest. And so Jesus laid down and he promptly fell asleep. And maybe the extra nice, gentle rocking of the boat was helpful to get him to fall asleep quickly. Now, during the time that Jesus was sleeping, it didn't stay quite so calm. In fact, we read in the Bible that a big storm arose and the winds were blowing and there were waves and water was coming into the boat. And some of Jesus' disciples were very used to being on the water. A few of them were fishermen, so they had done this a lot. They knew what it was like to be on the water. And even they were fearing for their lives. They were worried. They were afraid. They were scared. And they saw how this, the water was coming into their boat. And if this would continue, if the storm would go on longer, the water would, would come into their boat to the point where they would sink. 
And if the storm didn't stop, they might even drown. And so they were worried for their lives. They were scared. And then they remembered. They had someone on their boat with them who could help them. Jesus was on their boat. But what was Jesus doing this whole time while there was a storm? Look at him. He was sleeping. The Bible tells us that Jesus was asleep in the midst of this howling storm with wind and rain and waves and frightened um, disciples here on the boat. Jesus was sleeping. How could he sleep through this? Well, his disciples remembered that he was there now and they quickly woke him up and they said, Master, look at the storm around us. We are perishing or we're dying. Aren't you afraid for us? Aren't you going to help us? You're just going to let us die? That's in my own words now, but that's how afraid they were. And that's how they woke Jesus up. And Jesus, he woke up and he stood up. And what did he do? He spoke to the storm and he said, peace, be still. Did the storm obey him? Yes. The waves got calm, the wind ceased, the rain stopped, and everything became calm and peaceful again, just like it had been when Jesus had fallen asleep. And Jesus rebuked his disciples and said to them, why were you worried or why were you afraid? Have you so little faith? In other words, didn't you believe in me? Didn't you trust me? Didn't you know that I would never let anything happen to you? I'm always with you. And the disciples, when they saw what happened with the storm, when they saw how the winds and the waves obeyed Jesus, they were in awe. They had never seen anything like this before, that the creation itself was obedient to Jesus and did what Jesus asked. And that reminds us of the beginning of the Bible, right? Of the account of creation, when God created everything. How did God create everything? We read that he simply spoke. He said, let there be light, and there was light. All he had to do was speak it into existence, and creation obeyed him. And here again, we see how God, how Jesus as God spoke, and his creation obeyed him and did exactly what he asked. And you know what? I really like this story because even though we might not be in a boat, on a sea and in a storm, although maybe you know what that's like. Thankfully, I haven't really experienced that. But even though we haven't maybe been in a physical storm on a boat, on a lake, we all go through storms in life, times in our life where maybe we're tempted to do something wrong. Maybe in school, something happens where we're really tempted because we're in a difficult situation. Maybe we didn't do our homework or we didn't study for a test or something like that and we're really tempted to do the wrong thing like lie or cheat um, or not tell the truth. And so we're tempted to do wrong. It's a storm in life. But Jesus here is reminding us with this story that he's just a prayer away. We can come to him in this storm and ask him to help us and he will. Or what about other storms in life where we're also very afraid? I can tell you that this last week has been a bit of a storm for me. So many of my friends are really sick and it worries me. Even my husband was sick this week, all week long. And it's a storm that we're going through. And what Jesus wants us to do is he wants us to come to him and he wants us to wake him up, so to speak, in our prayers and say, Lord, help us. We need you. We believe in you. We know that you can help us and we trust you. You know, it's wonderful that Jesus was able to sleep through that storm. And I think, too, that the picture that I explained at the beginning of how my children slept through the storm shows us the kind of peace and contentment that we can have in Jesus. He wants us to trust, just like little children, just like you can trust your parents to take care of you. Jesus wants us to trust him to take care of us. That no matter what kind of storm we go through, no matter what kind of temptation we face or when we're worried or scared, that we remember Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still powerful. He can still calm the storm. And he can calm the storms that we go through in our life, and he can help us. And we want to pray, especially this week, that God would be with all those who are sick, that he would heal them and help them and be close to them, that God would be with those who are sad, 
that he would comfort them and give them strength and help them to feel that he's near them. And if you're going through a storm, tell Jesus about it. He always wants to help. He wants us to come to him with all of our storms and he wants to bring us through them as well and say, peace be still into our lives. That's my prayer for all of you. That's my prayer for myself and my family and my church family. And I know that God will hear this prayer. And we want to thank him for that as well. I wish you a blessed Sunday. I wish you God's nearness. And I hope to see you again very soon.